where you are live. Live. Let's go. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hello everyone. So thanks for coming today. And welcome to our first international online Duke Valley meeting. My name is William. I'm here with Pedro, and we are part of Duke Valley coordination team. For those who don't know us, we are a Duke based in Brazil with regular meetings since 2012. And this is our first online international meeting. Now I will quickly switch to Portuguese to talk to our Brazilian audience, and then I will be back to English. Pessoal, Bem-vindos a mais um Jogue Vale Online. Dessa vez vai ser em inglês. A gente está aqui com o Daniel Oi e com o Pedro. E a, a, a apresentação vai ser em inglês inteiramente. A gente não vai mais voltar para português. Mas vocês podem, no chat, fazer perguntas em português. Se não tiverem é, entendendo alguma coisa ou se não souber como falar algum termo em, em inglês, está tudo bem. Eu e o Pedro, a gente vai traduzir e fazer as perguntas para o Daniel. É, agora eu vou voltar para o inglês. E depois passar para o Pedro e vamos começar a plantação. Now back to English. So Pedro will talk about our today's presentation, and then right after it we will start it. So go for it, Pedro. Okay, thanks, William. Thank you all for joining with us on today on Hangouts. Today we're talking about the security APIs using Quarkus and Cloak. So in this session, Daniel will walk uh, you through how Quarkus enables developers to secure APIs with our back, RBIC, implementation based on Coke DAS services. You all also learning how you can increase development and productivity while you are adding security logic continuously. So introducing Daniel, Daniel is uh, is a senior principal te uh, technical marketing manager at Red Hat to evangelize developers for building cloud native microservices and serverless functions with uh, cloud native runtimes. Example Quarkus, Spring Boot, and Node.js, and also using OpenShift and Kubernetes. Then he also continues to contribute to various cloud open source projects and ecosystems, SCNCF, in Baser, for accelerating DevOps adoption in enterprises. He's speaking at lots of uh, technical seminars, workshops, and meetups to elaborate on new emerging technologies for enterprise developers and DevOps teams. So welcome, uh, Daniel. Thank you for joining today. And I guess you can start it. Thanks so much, Daniel. Yeah, thank you so much, William and Pedro. Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome to the joining session. Maybe I can get started with the, uh, my awkward Portuguese, like, uh, hola, uh, obrigado por, uh, por entrar dos sesso. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Actually, I run this stuff uh, when I present one of my talk in TDC, the developer conference in the Latin America. So, yeah. Just briefly, uh, just yeah, maybe I need to apology my bad accent of the Portuguese. Mm -hmm. That went that went very well. Yeah, like that. thanks for that. Yeah, obrigado. Yeah. So once again, uh, first of all, let me share my screen. And uh, this is my first time to use this one. Okay. Do you know what? So sharing screen is most the hardest part to doing the session. So can you see my screen? And yes. I'll change the yes. presentation. You guys hopefully see my screen now. All right. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about this, how to secure and protect your cloud network microservices with a RESTful API like a JAX-RS and using Quarkus and Keycloak is so one of the most popular uh, single sign-on open source project. And then just a quick reminder, and uh, it was a really great introduction. Thanks for that, uh, Pedro. So name is Daniel O. I'm more specialized in serverless and service mesh and cloud name runtime, like a Spring Boot, Node.js, and of course, Quarkus. And uh, out of, I do a lot of things stuff. I uh, really love to enjoy, uh, evangelize people and uh, talk to people and uh, sharing and got inspired from their people like a developer, a DevOps engineer, etc. 
here's my uh, old contact information and just quick reminder, just here's my Twitter. You can feel free to follow my Twitter and then here's my YouTube channel, Bini Yuara Daniel TV, and my key repository. I'm gonna uh, showcase today uh, some kind of nice, nice uh, live demo today. And it also, I already pushed that code into my Giri project, Daniel 030. So let me get started with really fun stuff uh, rather than a boring technical architecture. So do you know who this guy is? I know this is you, if, even if you are not a huge fan of Star Wars, the movie, you know this guy is Darth Vader. Luckily, he's not my father. By the way, so let's say this is one of the guy to uh, some kind of job, have responsibility of the, your security. Like uh, you can say DevSecOps guy or InfoSec guy or just security guy. One day, this security guy uh, just bring his lightsaber and uh, get into your room or just send an email to you and just say, I see security breach, and then as a developer, you might uh, uh, you, you might respond to that. Oh, that's not a problem for me because you need to go to another room, like a, a QA team or a CI/CD DevOps team or a production maintenance team. Not my team, not me, because I am just humble developer. But the next sentence came up everywhere which means I see security breach everywhere, which means at that time, this is not your problem uh, uh, when this guy says this kind of words. So in this uh, just a quick intro, I wanna say the security breach or security problem can be happening everywhere on your technology stack from your application code, your Java method or classes or even configuration file, and then uh, the runtime stack and infrastructure like a Kubernetes or even bare metal or network or storage, the security problem can be happening everywhere on your technology uh, field. So we cannot ignore security problem, security issue when you develop some kind of nice application. So, how to get starting that security issue, I mean, the fix that security issue, where we needed to get started with. Maybe there are a lot of some asset, but as CNCF ambassador, but not uh, necessarily, but you can get started with the CNCF for security and compliance landscape. As you can see, there are a lot of tools, not just only focused on the application side, like a, a uh, like a checkpoint, uh, checking your application, like a, a redundancy and a duplication or a black dog showcases and analyze your application code, where it's your security breach or some of the issue, the potential issue as well. But there are more than that, like a clear uh, allows developer to scan your container image, which is also include your application code. There are a lot of stuff here. And now today I'm gonna a little bit talk about key clock. So we actually Red Hat uh, submitted uh, to contribute our key clock project to CNCF as a part of the uh, sandbox project, but still ongoing the reviewing process. So that's why you cannot see the key clock in this landscape at this moment, but hopefully it will be show up in this landscape in, uh, in the future. So what is the problem? You got a lot of choices that, but it's too many choices for developers, even enterprise architect or uh, your uh, team leader, DevOps team, or even CI level. Well, we got a lot of choices to uh, solve that security problem in production or developer environment or testing environment. But problem is which one would be perfect would be uh, fitted in our environment or application development. So that's really hard to choice. So, so for more the developer, I mean, Java developer perspective, 
they don't want to learn something new technology. So for example, I need to develop new reactive application. So to do that, I have more than 10 years of Spring Boot experiences, but I don't, I didn't, I never ever tried to develop reactive application using Spring Reactive or a reactive project. In that case, the Spring developer is already senior Spring developer, but they needed to learn something new because Spring Reactor is totally different. And also, if you want to integrate a uh, backend messaging system as an example, Kafka, you need to use Spring integration as well as Spring Cloud Streams uh, to implement reactive application and uh, Kafka Sync and Kafka Source, something like that. And also, uh, uh, like uh, the in-memory channel implementation because the core Spring Boot doesn't provide that mechanism in a native way. But that's why there are huge Spring ecosystem, which means another burden for developer to catch up that technology for uh, next year reactive journey. So if you could just use existing Java skill set and technology capability to develop brand new application as an example, cloud native application. It's not microservice. It should be microservice, but cloud native a little bit more focused on cloud architecture like uh, Amazon or Kubernetes uh, slash container packaging technology. What if you can also evolve you are existing microservices to suffer less. So for example, you just deploy this same business application into Amazon Lambda or Kubernetes Knave event or Azure function. For covering all cases, you just want to change this small configuration not other than all application logic. Because in typically, the developer needed to run some kind of API or SDK the public cloud provider uh, provides to develop the serverless application. But if you could uh, just avoid that burden to develop cloud neighbor microservice and serverless and event driven application. So Quarkus actually allows developer to do the same thing from traditional microservice development, but also cloud neighbor microservice and serverless and reactive application at the same time. So what is the Kikla? I assume a lot of people already have some experience to use Kikla or just a single sign-on uh, to authenticate, authorize uh, your uh, uh, application security improvement. So for example, Kikla, one of the popular uh, single sign-on project, uh, it provides uh, definitely single sign-on to login, your specific application with a dedicated uh, login page. And also you can uh, designate like a RBAC, like a lower base access control. It is not just uh, authentication, it's more than authorization. So the same user uh, cannot access a specific, uh, cannot access a specific API, but can access some another API because the user has a deeper role to access your application, like a web application and service application, like a RESTful API, and also connect to another uh, user directory, like a LDAP activity. I'm gonna a little bit talk about a little bit later in the, with the use cases here. So what if you could use two different technology together to protect your existing microservices, but also uh, brand new cloud network microservices. Quarkus Key Cloud will make that happen. So I'm I'm gonna stop the boring task here. Just get uh, right into the demo. Just above that, uh, let me try to showcase so what uh, what I wanna do today. Showcase here. So here is the simple demo. Uh, topology architecture. You know, you can see my the GitHub repository, like a Daniel 03, uh, secure Quarkus key cloud. You can go to right now and just clone it and you can actually replicate it on your local machine. So here's your, your uh, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna create the two different 
uh, RESTful API, like API admin, API user submit. So API admin can be only accessible by admin role, which is by uh, key class server provider. And we're gonna use actually uh, bear a token, uh, which he, is issued by OpenID connector provider, as an example, key clock server. So better token is one of the, the better token authorization is one of the process to authorize the uh, accessibility to your application. Uh, that better token uh, definitely can be issued by OpenID connector, also known as OIDC, as well as OAuth2, a uh, compliant server, as an example, key clock or the other server like a Google uh, authentication server, something like that. So this is the uh, maybe quick example uh, how to use a better token uh, with the RBA control, uh, which is issued by key clock server uh, using OIDC protocol uh, uh, developed by Quark's application. So one thing uh, I'm gonna showcase today during the demo uh, with the Quarkus is Quarkus Dev Services. So what is Quarkus Dev Services is? So when you develop uh, like a specific use case as an example, database connection, as an example, you need to connect to PostSQL or you need to connect to MongoDB or you need to uh, connect to MS SQL Server. In that case, how do you do that? You know, most developer just try to use in-memory database uh, as an example, H2 database, rather than uh, real database, or uh, just try to run container-based container database using Docker CLI, or just to connect to remote database with your granted permission user credential. But any case you need to set some specific configuration with your application. If you change that configuration before you push the code into external external Git repository, maybe you ruined your entire system because you, you definitely, you probably have an awesome CI CD pipeline. Once you push the code, it automatically build packaging deploy to the production in five minutes. So to avoid that problem, maybe there's something uh, different feature built in Java framework. So Quarkus provide that capability. So if you have a proper extension, for example, PostSQL extension, or if you have a Kafka extension or a Keycloud extension, it's a Quarkus framework automatically stands up container image automatically during that mode. Like a, I'm gonna showcase that thing. And also the Quarkus provide the dev UI. Uh, you can have own key clock dashboard. You don't need to go to uh, specific uh, uh, key clock compilation stuff. You could just do, the, do that in dev UI in the Quarkus side. So now I'm gonna really uh, start my talking with some boring text. So I'm gonna start presentation mode any question on that on the YouTube channel, something like that? Okay, so. So here's my local uh, environment. So there's just the uh, AMP directory here. So first of all, I'm gonna create a new Quarkus project from scratch. Maybe if you have some experience to uh, develop Quarkus project, maybe you can go to code.quarkus.io so we just released a new Quarkus community version 2.4.0. And then you can just go to here and then uh, whenever you need it to uh, some kind of OIDC and then you can find all OIDC extension and then just change your group ID and artifact name. And you can select your Gradle or Gradle with the Kotlin or Maven. And then you can edit this style of code and then you could change it version and then just click on generate the application. It will automatically download G file and unzip something like that. So maybe it's a maybe very traditional way to generate new Java project from code.corks IO code generator. It's very similar to uh, Spring Initializer, but today I'm gonna showcase a little bit different way because Quarkus actually provides a Quarkus CLI. It provides automation and a pretty simple and a shorter command line 
to do the same capability. So I'm going to create a Quarkus command line, and then I'm going to create a new project and application. You can actually CLI uh, application as well, but this is a just normal application. And then uh, let's say uh, project name, secure workers, and key clock. And then I'm going to add the extension, uh, like a OIDC, and then rest easy, it's easy, and the text as well. It allows developer to consume and produce the uh, JSON format data. OK, I just create a new project. It takes a few seconds to generate a new project from scratch. As you see, the Maven wrapper and all configuration, even Docker file to containerize this application as you can, uh, before you deploy the Kubernetes. And then here is the sample application like Hello World just generated. And I'm going to change the directory to the right one. I just use Maven. I'm going to change this directory just using my ID tool. You can use, actually use any ID tool like IntelliJ, Eclipse. I think I'm going to make a bigger, a bit more. So hopefully you can see be better. And then here's the my palm XML. So I just create the rest one project to that four dot o. And then here the rest is Jackson. I just edited and the OID is edited. And also the other one is default uh, Quarkus extension uh, because Quarkus provide. Uh, the rest uh, easy to uh, rest easy extension to explore the RESTful API and the unit test, etc. And then let's go to the source file here. So first of all, there are unit test scenario already created one like a hello world. Just endpoint hello and the return hello rest easy. So let's go to the generation Java class one resource here to handle your rest endpoint. So hello is endpoint, and the hello rest is exactly the same thing your test scenario. So Parkers provide continuous testing capability to uh, keeping up your TDD strategy. So I'm gonna show uh, what that means for developer just a little bit later. And then one more thing, the uh, resources file, as you see, there's nothing in there, any application, any resources, the key and values. So here's the thing. Always, first thing first, you want to start Quarkus demo. You can use a Maven command line, but I'm going to use a Quarkus CLI and there. And then in the meantime, you already added the OIDC extension and dependency. And then without any computation, and the Quarkus try to stand up. Here is a new container image as you see. And here's my Docker dashboard. And you can see here, uh, here we go. So key clock, uh, let me try to zoom in. Here we go. So 515.02 uh, is a race to key clock. Uh, container image just download automatically. So you don't need to use a Docker CLI or a Docker Compose thing, or even you don't need to install a standalone key clock server on your local machine. So it's still running up and it based on uh, the wide fry core engine, but we're gonna have some uh, developer working to change the core engine based on Quarkus to run key clock. It will uh, release uh, soon enough. So in the meantime, when you go back to terminal and then you can see uh, the Quarkus is almost starting, but just waiting for uh, waiting for your uh, the key clock is running. Yeah, we gotta just running Quarkus application. And now, okay, go back to here. And now you gotta uh, have some here. So here is a uh, profile dev activated and live coding activated. And then uh, here is a new uh, install feature like a. Uh, CDI is a default, com default capability Quarkus provide. You can actually use any cases to inject CDI beans and the rest is for export the RESTful API and uh, the processing JSON format data with the Jackson. And then uh, here is the Vertex because Quarkus bit one Vertex engine to 
uh, implement re, uh, network programming and you know, reacting routing and also uh, a lot of uh, the uh, performance improvement. And here's the interesting stuff. You can actually press D from terminal and then you can find the go to here, Quarkus Dev UI. And here is our open ID connect. When you click on the editing icon, you can see automatically uh, set it up your auth server, which he referred to our key clock server as a running container. And also there are all the key clock related to compilation already set it up. You can actually change anything from here is automatically change into your local file system as well. Let me show you a little bit later uh, how it works to do that. And you go back to the UI. And then here is the interesting stuff. You can find the terminal result here in the test not running. When you click on test running, it automatically trigger your test cases. So for example, we have a one test case and then here is a test result. And you click on that and then it will, it's all passed here. Oh, just click on here. And then you can also go to uh, terminal when you run here, and then I'm gonna try to rerun the application and then restarting and then it will show test result as well. Oh, this is just some kind of error to, uh, I'm gonna just reload uh, some of the case there, but it's not a big deal. You, just, you can just ignore that thing. Okay, so back to here. So I'm going to dev UI once again. So Quarkus is still uh, waiting for 60 seconds for URL, which means the uh, whenever we change something, the Quarkus try to connect to our key clock server. So uh, currently we uh, maximum wait for 60 seconds, but it actually uh, rest than 60 seconds. But once we uh, improve the key clock server based on Quarkus, also known as key clock X, it will be uh, quicker to start up, like uh, maybe uh, under the 10 seconds, something like that. All right, and then back to the application and we have the hello rest easy. So let's try to X to end point here. I'm gonna open another terminal window and then just try to go to uh, end point here. And now you got a hello rest easy. Let's try to change, uh, let's say, I'm gonna change the application just for fun. And hello, let's eat. Um, let's maybe change this one. Welcome to uh, Joe L. And let's try to edit some new configuration here. Like configure properly and Name, let's say username here. The name, and I'm gonna add that username. And I just have a file and I'm back to the compilation. And I just set a username here, like my people name Dan. Maybe I just need my Daniel, let's save a file. And then back to the terminal window and then go to hello. And it will just welcome to J Bell and the Daniel. But in the meantime, you probably know that I never ever tried to recompile, rebuild, and the repackaging and restart, redeploy just as part of the in order to development. I never ever tried to do that. Actually, Quarkus take that off and take it over for me. But in the meantime, you gotta test the fail and then go back to like a uh, here web UI, dev UI. And then you could test relearning. And actually, uh, uh, it already done that, but sometimes there are asynchronous, uh, some network issue on my local environment. So, uh, and it, see, this is one of the feature of the continuous testing. Whenever you change the code and then you actually activate the continuous testing feature on your dev mode, the Quarkus automatically detect uh, some kind of change and recompile and restart your Quarkus application runtime. In the meantime, also Quarkus tried to uh, run test cases and you got to find the error automatically. And then 
you will see the error is there. As you see, here is the error. And then I'm going to make it better. Here is hello, rest easy. This is the, your actual test result, uh, the expect result. But you got to actually this one. So how do you fix that? So in a, according to TDD uh, environment, the test driven development strategy, you actually change your test code first, and then you got to confirm your change code is working. And then you go back to your business logic and apply that new application code. But in this case, I tried to upper this side, not a best practice, but try to showcase a nice demo here. So I'm going to change this one like this, create that. I just save a file and back to here and it's automatically retested and then we got a success test. So this is not only about the key clock, like a securing test, uh, secure your application. This is all about your Java application development with the purpose. I'm, I'm gonna just showcase the nice feature, how to increase developers' productivity with the Quarkus. This is a new feature in Quarkus 2.x. If you still uh, play with the Quarkus 1.x version, maybe you don't see uh, this feature, but this is a brand new thing. Okay, so I'm gonna close that. And then let's try to, you know, one more thing here. So you can actually find the user computation here. Uh, let's try to, we can uh, pedal, like a change my, uh, not here and then here just, just click on the save. And then you could just green color, which means it's applied and then go back to terminal. And then you got us a new result. And in the meantime, you got some error. It's automatically detected. So let's uh, ignore the continue testing uh, from now on. But one more interesting, when you go back to your local IDE tool and application property file, and then it's also changing your local file system as well. You don't need to go back to your local file system, change the value. So this is really a really interesting or really uh, comp comparable feature uh, to manage your computation on your application side. All right, so let's uh, uh, keep trying to develop new application for a little bit more uh, focus on the security. So first of all, I'm gonna create a new uh, Java bin here, something like a user, because I'm gonna uh, save my user credential here. So first of all, I create a user and then uh, create a new, uh, Java attribute here, like a, a string, and uh, like let's say username. And uh, here is a new uh, constructor here, user. And I'm gonna use uh, security uh, identity, uh, which he, uh, Quarkus OIDC extension provides. And let's say identity. And then I'm gonna uh, get the username from key clock support based on this uh, Java class. And then this username equal is identity and get principal and get name equal. And let's try to add one simple uh, public method here, like a getter, uh, probably uh, like a, a string and get Username, very simple way, and this username equal, and just just return username. Yep, that's it. So that's just create, I just knew Java bean to store my, uh, store the user credential, like a name from my key clock server. So now I'm gonna create two different Java class I just showcased in our demo architecture previously. So to do that, I'm gonna create a new file, like a user's so a Java file, first of all. And then uh, I need to set uh, the request, like a spring request mapping. This is just specify your uh, endpoint here, like an API Here's here, and say file import. And then 
I'm going to inject CDIB into security identity. And also uh, create a new game method here. New pass, like a me, just like uh, I set it up the uh, top load view and then produce JSON format, media type. Some format, and I need to add low around for only user user role only access to this endpoint when you uh, access token from uh, bell uh, for access token from key clock server. Uh, to do that, I'm going to use low around annotation for only user role, and here is the public method something like me uh, return new. Return our user bean and just like a, let's say method name me and then return in a new user and I entity user identity. Okay, so I just create a new one and then let's go back to here our the terminal window and then I'm going to try to access the application, but for that, we're going to go to dev UI, back to dev UI. And here's the key clock provider. When you click on key clock, and here's the key clock admin, it's already built in uh, our the container image, and then go to login, admin, the default password admin, and the ID is admin, and then it already it already include a new Quarkus RAM here, so RAM, so Quarkus, and the client here is Quarkus dash app, and the credential we're gonna use a secret. The name is secret, and here's the user. You can see all users Alice and Bob. Alice actually has the admin and user role. Two roles has Alice has two roles, and I go back to another user Bob. And you can find the low mapping, it's only user. So we're gonna use this uh, uh, this user to access this application. So go back to here, and then let's try to uh, just uh, use that thing, but just to make sure our key clock e port number. So key clock port number keeping changing whenever we restart your Quarkus, because whenever you Quarkus restart dev mode, it automatically restart your dev services for Kafka, which means whenever Kafka container uh, start again and the uh, exporting port will be changed randomly. So I just make sure uh, using the Kafka thing and then here is how to access to your endpoint, like uh, access token, like a call URL. Here's your local auth and the, using the Quarkus RAM. And then here is Bob, like a username Bob and the password Bob, the grant type password. I just call it that and then just make sure access token, we get it. And we got an access token. And then try to uh, e, uh, access a point local host 8080 and the API you just me. And then you got like the username Bob here. We got the right here, but if you don't have any access token, you cannot access that. Let me try to export access token, uh, something like that. Make the no and try this one. And you got uh, the uh, 411 unauthorized error. So, but interesting is this is maybe traditional way for developer to how to get access token using call command and then just uh, access the actual endpoint with the dev bearer token using OIDC protocol. But the one of the beauty of the Quarks thing, you can actually dev service the login single page application. So this feature, you can actually uh, log in the Bob and pass all the Bob. And then you can actually view access token just like you got from call command. You don't need to use anything. And here's the decoding thing. So when you see that this access token, oh, what the, what the hell is that? And I cannot understand the actual, the access token means, but you can find here, here is the, uh, is the bearer token and uh, the 
is from the Quarkus app services. And then you can actually have the view ID as well. And now you're gonna to try to access the API, like X API uh, users and me, and then click on X token. I, I got a typo users and click on the you got 200. So if you have, so now we got, this is just a really simple way and a really beauty of the dev service for Kafka, Quark as a profile. So let's just keep moving to create another, uh, the other uh, Java sources to access control for admin uh, resources here. So admin uh, resource Java file. And then uh, we're gonna create a new admin. So you get a class. And the first of all, I'm gonna set the path API admin. And then uh, just to create a new method. Yeah, maybe I need to add uh, authenticate. This is only us gain user role can access that and get and also produce media type and JSON. And also one more thing, uh, low access control is also only admin and public like a just as the simple return, like an enemy method. Uh, let's say just return like a, you got a grand application. That's it. And then let's go to terminal and maybe just this one. And then just try to API enemy. And then you got to, uh, you got to the, uh, for the authorization error because the this is only for only for the admin. So when you go to uh, vlogging with Alice because Alice has the admin role, Alice, and then uh, the view access token, and then you can actually copy this one uh, for the later uh, test and API admin. And now you add your success. And I go to here, uh, access token. I'm gonna try to one more time. Access token. And then I'm gonna try to access admin URL here the AP enemy, and now we're really granny. So this is a really simple thing. So here is the how to control uh, OIDC extension by Quarkus uh, for RBAC uh, control handling uh, based on uh, Java application using better token. So pretty simple and pretty easy way. Let me give you some more uh, very simple way uh, to uh, have RBAC control in Quarkus. To do that, I'm gonna to go to here. So maybe uh, I'm gonna change it. I'm gonna add the new extension from ID tool. You, if you already include, you know, install Quarkus extension, I mean Quarkus tool extension on your VS code or plugin, you can actually have a Quarkus feature here as well. So just here, you can add a Quarkus extension. So let's try to uh, add a key clock authorization extension. This is a Beaton OIDC. But it's a pretty simple uh, to implement RBAC control by Keycrox of a rather than uh, application code. So to do that, we actually added some kind of uh, low arouse, something like that. I'm gonna, you, you, now we're gonna use Keycrox authorization extension, which means that you don't need to add any uh, manual RBAC control on your application code. So to do that, I'm gonna delete to this one and I'm, I don't need to. Uh, this manual thing, I just uh, delete all in a, in a resource file. I also don't need it to here. And now uh, I just needed to add some kind of necessary configuration on my application. To do that, I just copy from my cheat sheet. I don't want to ruin my entire typo. Here's the interesting stuff. So let's say I just finished my local environment development with the uh, Dev services. Now I'm going to a little bit more 
need to package this application as a container before I deploy to a uh, Kubernetes cluster as a part of the, your inner loop development process. So to do that, first thing, I'm going to stop my local environment. And then I need to start uh, like a Docker container. Just imagine this is my like a production similar environment. So let's say try to con uh, Docker run. Uh, let's say that. Uh, what is that? The same key clock version here. Like a, uh, Docker run key clock and a username and admin, password or admin. But one thing different is the export port. I got to specify like 80, 80, 81, 80. And it takes some time to start up. And then I just uh, package this application to access to uh, real uh, key clock server, not dev services. So to do use that, I actually uh, specify auth production URL. And then here is a uh, client ID backend services, but previously dev services already fixed that, like a backend services, not backend so Quarkus dash app, and the secret is same thing. And this is a one very important configuration. Quarkus key clock policy enforce, so enabler actually enable key clock server to manage your RBAC control rather than manual setting up your own method or class. So our kick, uh, Docker container based key clock server is just run. And let's try to access the dev one. This is the dev services. So I'm going to try to go to 80, local was the 8081, 8080. And this is not the app server. This is the standalone container and you know, the password admin admin. And as you see, this is an empty key clock server, which means you don't have a uh, Quarkus RAM. This is only a master RAM. Let's try to add a Quarkus RAM. I just already made this one. You can go to my GIDI repository. You can find the Quarkus RAM as well. I just create, uh, import the Quarkus RAM. And then you now hear Quarkus RAM and then you go to client, you can have the backend services. We actually define our application properly here. And then the credential is a secret. And go to users. I added something a little bit different, like a, a, at least the same thing, but JDO and admin. And then go to Alice and a, a low mapping is only user. And then go to JDO and then go to mapping is combination. Let's try to remove that and then edit it. Uh, admin. Okay, that's cool. And now I go back to here and everything is okay. I just have a file. And now I'm going to package this application to park as a build. And I'm going to skip unit test because we already uh, fixed that all the continuous testing stuff. But whenever I change, whenever I add a new, uh, security code, but I never ever tried to add a test code. My bad, but I don't have enough time to implement that. Okay, I just build application and and just run using Java command line. Star in the target directory, this app, and job file. Let's try to run this application. And it's just application running. It's pretty fast. It just need to almost three seconds to start up. And let's try to access the endpoint here. So we're gonna uh, the the same thing, but in that case, we don't have any dev service, which means uh, we don't have a dev UI because this is not a live coding environment. As you can see, uh, there is no live coding, there is no profile, uh, dev profile. This is only production profile, which means you don't have, a, you cannot use dev UI. Uh, you can actually enforce to use dev UI in production, but we're not going to recommend that. This is only for dev UI and dev, CR, uh, dev UI and uh, dev services only for local uh, test uh, developer environment. So let's try to use the call command here. So here is the right port for our key clock server based on Docker container. And then here is Alice Alice. And then just to make sure we got the access token. We got that. And let's try to access Alice. And then we got a username Alice. So now we got a 
uh, have the same capability based on low base X control. If you try to access the uh, admin endpoint with the Alice, but Alice doesn't have any admin role the, in the dev service container, you actually at least has admin role. But in this case, like a little bit more similar to production environment, we change the role. At least doesn't have admin role any longer, but the JDO actually has admin role instead. So when you try to do that, we got us some uh, forbidden error. So if you go to access tone code, but change that username, like a JDO and the password, the same thing. JDO and then go to admin. And now got admin, you got a, the, the admin new stuff. So we got the same thing, but pretty simple code. So uh, this is just uh, how to secure and protect your JAX RS based uh, service application on Quarkus plus Kikra. So I got five minutes, so I have a bunch of the slides there, but let me try to a little bit more focus on demo today. So there's one thing I want to deploy this application to Kubernetes. This is my OpenShift cluster. So first thing, so when you go to admin, you can actually uh, use the operator to install Keycrawl. Here is the Keycrawl server. But there are actually Red Hat uh, the single sign -on operator as well. So I'm going to use a Red Hat uh, single sign -on operator. It's a more productized one and a more stable. And I just install. And then this project secure Quarkus. And it takes a few seconds. I mean, almost the take a one minute to uh, create the application. In the meantime, let's try to change my application a little bit more because I'm going to deploy this to uh, OpenShift. To do that, I need to add a new extension to deploy OpenShift extension. And also, uh, I needed to add some computation here, back to here. Okay, I just added a new extension. And then here's a new OpenShift extension, the deployment target OpenShift, and then OpenShift automatically create a route URL to access the endpoint by uh, external client, and uh, we're going to deploy Kubernetes cluster. And then here is a Docker runtime. Uh, uh, I'm going to container runtime to Docker because actually uh, I'm using Mac OS. So when you packaging application as, as a native compilation, it only running on Mac OS, not Linux operating system like a Fedora or the RHEL because OpenShift running on RHEL. Uh, using RHEL images, so that's why I need to use a Docker container to packaging application container uh, running on Linux operating system rather than Mac OS. And one more thing, uh, I'm going to add a uh, new uh, auth URL, which is based on, I just uh, deploy on OpenShift to do that, but I just keep it up my existing one. And then one of the beauty of the thing is you can actually use the prefix like a product in the same thing. And I just copy from here. So view operator. And then here's a key clock instance. And then you can create a new key clock. Let's try to using uh, example key clock, something like that. Uh, let's try to change that and Quarkus key clock. And I'm going to leave the all different uh, Quarkus key clock agent. Let's try to But I just create on uh, create thing here. Ah, yeah, we got this here one. So let's try to delete exist one, and then go to developer UI, and it takes a will uh, few minutes uh, to uh, create deploy new key clock server and uh, the database. Uh, I mean the post is cool here. Okay, and it takes a few more minutes to start up key clock server. Once the key clock server is running, and then you can see here the new endpoint in the key clock server. I just copy from here and back to the application. And here we go. And then now I'm packaging this application. It will actually uh, repair 
this URL. And then I'm going to change one more thing to go to admin, like a Quarkus native, granny, I just save a file. And then I'm going to deploy this one is native comparison. I'm going to build and then native and skip the test. Okay, so let's try to do that. It takes a few minutes, actually. Uh, oh yeah, it's a long directory. So here we go. Workers build native and we're gonna skip test. And go back to open shift cluster. Yeah, it's our key clock server almost dead. Once it's uh, running on, I actually needed to import the same Quarkus RAM we just like did in my local key clock server when I run at a container, like a Docker container engine. So when you go to logs and it's still running up, take some time to based on uh, key clock server. Okay, so here's it actually, I did it just a couple hours ago. And then as you see, here's our key clock server, same application, but I deploy native comparison. And then here's a native. And then you, we just need to 0.7 uh, millisecond, uh, 710 millisecond startup, it's pretty much fast. And then here is this key clock server. And when you go to key cloud location, I actually import the same uh, Quarkus LAM ahead of time using the same thing, but here the single sign on of Red Hat, it on key clock, but you can see uh, something different. Yeah, the admin password is automatically generated. So here is just uh, Kubernetes secret. And then you can find the admin password here. And here we go, admin. And now you got the Quarkus RAM and then the credential is backend services and then user, it's the same thing we just testing locally. So I'm gonna wrap up the demo. We are already uh, top of our. So I'm gonna go back to the presentation. Uh, I'm gonna real quick uh, to wrap up and then, and then I'm gonna just more than happy to address question at the end of the session. So. So uh, this is one of some cool feature of the Quarkus uh, with the OIDC, the multi-tenant thing. Sometimes the same application uh, needed to access the multiple tenant, which is a different namespace in Kubernetes or a different security domain, or even you're gonna use a different uh, OIDC provider from KeyClock, or the other one is Google OpenID provider. So you can actually set it up in single, uh, application property file with a different computation, like a 10 on A, 10 on B, something like that. And then there are more security uh, capability feature in Quarks, and not just only key cloud OIDC, but also uh, there are uh, using the boat in HashiCorp and also a JSON web token for RBAC control or access token control, a lot of stuff here, uh, like a JPA or JDBC, et cetera. And then here's the use case, actually, I already uh, explained a little bit uh, in at the very beginning time. You can have a centralized authentication to access your uh, microservices or API or even cloud provider with a centralized single sign-on. And also you can have a user federation uh, to manage the access control uh, from your uh, like a existing LD directory, like an AD from Microsoft or from social media, like a GitHub repository or a uh, single sign-on. You can also have uh, another stuff uh, from a couple of the system. And then with the Quarkus and Keycloak, uh, you can deploy the Quarkus application just like a did in OpenShift Kubernetes cluster. You have a cloud native application, even you, you have a Edge uh, or machine learning application based on Quarkus and then uh, with the that, uh, integrate with the single sign-on, uh, single sign-on pre lightweight container packaging on Kubernetes, which means that you can deploy a uh, distributed system to access a multiple heterogeneous system from bare metal to uh, public cloud. 
And then you can have a cross site application with the uh, distribute data cache, uh, the Red Hat data, Red Hat data grid built on InfinSpan. So the multiple hybrid cloud application go to global load balancer and then you know, that uh, network traffic uh, balance to uh, cross site. And then the single sign on actually handle the RBA control and then to increase performance to replication data, data grid as well. So there are leprous architecture we already have by uh, provided right here. So in the most, at least for the last, so developer uh, secure the uh, every single detail, the uh, lot of detailed application, different application like a mobile application, web application, like a backend microservices and RESTful API, or access to cloud services, et cetera, even Kubernetes with the containerized application. If you wanted to go to like a Quarkus stuff for running, here's a bin in URL, try dash Quarkus and code Quarkus IO. Uh, I'm gonna share this slide deck so you don't need to uh, uh, write it down this old URL. And then I just uh, published a new uh, reference card in the Dijon, how to develop Quarkus serverless function. It's a free download. Uh, you can just go to uh, Dijon URL and find the Quarkus serverless function. It's downloaded and it handle, uh, showcase how to develop serverless function application to deploy Amazon Lambda or uh, uh, Kubernetes, like OpenShift, the multiple uh, serverless platform with flexibility and portability serverless application. So I already created uh, uh, quick videos and demo and tutorial on my YouTube channel the Bini URL, Daniel TV, uh, including this demo as well. So if you uh, wanted to rewatch the studio, how it works and go through that, just go to my YouTube channel and feel free to subscribe to do that. Okay, I just done and back to the, my uh, terminal. Yeah, it's still running on time because name compilation, it takes a little bit longer than a general application packaging because you need to package everything related to library and application code, et cetera. So you don't need to do native compilation all the time. You just need to do that for a specific use case like a serverless function or you need to have a more high scale level application across cloud. You, in that case, you just need the one time buffer you uh, deploy application to the cloud or you can put into this uh, native compilation step as a part of your GitHub action or CI CD pipeline, et cetera. Okay, uh, Pedro and William, I'm sorry for the uh, running with the time. So is there any interesting question on that? No problem, no problem at all. It was a very interesting uh, talk, I love it. I, I was impressed of how uh, things seem to be talking to each other. Parco seems to be very well prepared to accept Kikloak. I was impressed with that. I, I was expecting that you would have uh, more, you know, more work to put this together. But then most of the comments were people impressed of how easy it was to create the, the uh, Quark's application. The hot reload with the test is really impressive. We didn't have had any specific question, but we had people, uh, you know, amazed of how things are working today. And the OpenShift part was uh, good to see as well because things move too fast, and most of the time we lose some of these details. And sure. I, I love the presentation because we got up to date with a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah, sorry for that. I, I, I definitely uh, made it really fast because I still run over time, uh, but I have a lot of stuff. So yeah, I most likely wanted to showcase live demo rather than slide where maybe it would be more helpful to understand what technology works behind the scene. So actually uh, this session may be maybe 70 minutes or 90 minutes. So maybe next time, if, if you give me more chance to uh, bring another topic like a subless or another stuff, maybe maybe I can showcase a little more stuff because in the very beginning time, continue testing, WI and other stuff, 
that's not actually related to today's topic, but I want to really want to showcase that capability as well because the developer really like that. Whenever I showcase that feature, continue testing live coding and the dev UI and the Quark CRI. And also, of course, I'm using that feature every single day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the talk was really great. And we are always getting impressed in a good way with Spark and all the things that we show. Yeah, just deploy, finish, and then it takes almost, uh, almost nine minutes, something like that. But you know what? So I learn a lot of uh, VS code and a lot of stuff. So maybe it's out of memory of my Mac OS. So that's too a little bit longer than I expected. So, so just feel free to reach out to me directly, like a Twitter or a YouTube channel or a GitHub repository. I'm more than happy to address any question. And if you have any like a amazing suggestion and idea, just let me know. I am more than happy uh, uh, conversation with that. Sure, we will. Thank you so much again, Daniel. Thank you, Daniel, so much.